Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. class we're going to go over today is as a man thinketh as a man thinketh let's start with proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 because the way that we think is going to dictate the way that we act the things that we do the way we carry ourselves read proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 for as he thinketh in his heart so is he Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So read the scripture. As you see in the scripture, it says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So however your mind is, whatever your mind is consumed with, that's how you are going to be. That's going to be your character. That's how people are going to know you. That's the name that you're going to have because the way your thoughts are, that's how your actions are going to be. So from there, let's go over to Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. Because in this truth, when we come into this truth, we all have things that has been ingrained in our minds 20, 30, 40, 50 years. However long we are, however old you are, however long you, how old you are when you came, before you came into this truth, all of those things been ingrained in your mind since you was a baby. Since you was in the womb, all the all the things and the evils that we were caught up in, and many struggle to get over being in the truth is a result of those years mm -hmm. of things being piled in our in our short term and long term memories, mainly our long term memory. But that's how we act. The things that we do is based on our thoughts. Remember, the scripture said, "As he thinks in his heart, so is he." Read what you got, in Mark. Mark chapter seven and verse twenty one. <laughs> For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So that's how we see. So it says, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. So the heart, when you see heart in the Bible, it's referring to our thoughts, our mind, our thought process. So it says, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Read. Adulteries, fornications, murders. So it says, adulteries, fornications, sexual lust. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Those are the things that flow out of our heart. Those are things that come from us not being raised up in this truth from a youth. We've been raised according to the, the ways of the world, the ways that, that Esau have set up. We, our fashions that we've lived in before this truth were not according to God's commandments. So many of us have adulteries, fornications, adulteries, having sex outside of a marriage, fornications. Just having sleeping around with this woman, that woman, so-called being pimps, being whores, whoremongers, sleeping around with any and every woman or sister that we've seen. Women opening their legs to any man that come across and, and say something that sound good to them. Murders. We came into, a lot of us came into the truth. A lot of us came out of the, the gang, uh, a gang background. Even out of gang back, just having hatred in your heart towards your brothers and sisters. Read. Thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. So it says thefts, covetousness. And as you, as you read through this, 
even in when, when you look at the uh, works of the flesh in Galatians, if you look at it, you notice that the things that are similar spirits, they're grouped together. Thefts and covetousness is the same, it's very similar. Thefts, you shall, thou shalt not steal. That's called going into a thief, somebody that steals things. Covetousness is you, you having an a evil desire for something that your neighbor has, your brother, your sister has, meaning that whatever they have, you want it for yourself. Not saying that it, you, you, want it, you want what they have for yourself, meaning you would take it from them if you have to because you don't want them to have it. Read. Verse 23. All these things come from within. Read that again. All these things come from within and defile the man. Read it again from the top. You're missing a word. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. So what Christ is going into here is that the things that the evil that's in our minds is what defile us. Because the evil that's in our minds, it, it reflects in our actions, the things that we do. So being in this truth, we have, to, we have to be constantly in the scriptures so that we can change the way we think as it relates to God's commandments. Because if we rely on the carnal man, the old man, we're going to keep going astray. We're going to keep messing up. We're going to keep falling into the same sins. We're going to keep looking at that. It, the, the summer is coming. You brothers, we're going to keep looking at that woman that walked past. The woman walked past, you see, you see her. Because you're walking straight, but then once she passes you, it's, your, it's, in, it's in your power to keep walking and not look back. Because when you look back, that's that, that's that adulteries and fornications. So in this truth, we have to change the way we think. Because the way we think, the thoughts that we think, the things that are going on in our mind, is, is going to reflect in our actions. So let's go to, from there, let's go to Numbers chapter 13 and verse 1. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 1. Because of many of the, coming into this truth, many, if not all, we did a lot of things that we did before this truth out of based out of low self-esteem. We didn't esteem ourselves as nothing because that's what we were taught. We were all, we come out of the slum, we come out of the ghettos. We didn't have nothing. So we really didn't have nothing to as, as, ascribe to. But coming into this truth, the thought process is Deuteronomy 7 and 6, that we are above all people. The Most High chose us above all people. So that's how we, that's the mindset we're supposed to walk in as we walk in to and fro. Meaning that we got to carry ourselves in a way that when we say we Israel, somebody going to say, I knew, something, I knew something was different about you because you don't do the same thing that everybody else do. You don't talk the way we talk. We don't walk the way we walk. They can see the difference by your actions because you have, you have, took it serious on renewing your mind, changing the way you think. Read what you got. This is Numbers chapter 13 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Read. Verse 3. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. So we see here, Moses, this is before we went into the land of Canaan, as we was going and taking over the portions of the land of our inheritance. The Most High instructed Moses to send men, send the heads of the children of Israel to go and spy out the land, to scope out the land, to see, to see the people that were in it, Basically, so that when we go in there and overtake it, we gonna be we be successful. So let's jump over to verse twenty six and see what happened. Numbers chapter thirteen and verse twenty six, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, 
We saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. So this is the account of Caleb. So Caleb, notice he mentioned that he said it's a land that floweth with milk and honey. He spoke of some good, the, the good that the land had is a, a milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. And he said, never, but he said, but the people of the land are strong. The cities are walled, meaning they got good, they got good, good defense. The cities are walled. What do he say? The, the children of Anak, the Amalekites, mm -hmm. Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, they dwell in the mountains. So he spoke about the good of the land, and he spoke about the people of the land. And he said, even though they had, even though he, you notice, he said they had walled. It's a land that was walled and very great, meaning they had good defense. But his report. In verse 30, he said, and Caleb, it says, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses. I mean, he set them at peace. He put their mind to rest. He said, let us go up at once and possess it. So I thought, after he said all that, even though he seen the people and they stature, in his mind, hey, we still can go and up subdue. We still can overtake this land. His thought process was very, was still very good. Hey, we still optimistic. We can still go and take overtake that land. Yeah, they got fenced up cities. They they got defense mechanisms up, but nevertheless, we still can go and overtake them. It says we are well able to overcome it. So let's see the flip side of that. Read verse thirty-one. But the man that went up with him said, "We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we." Verse thirty-two. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. So these are the men that went up with Caleb. They saw a totally different thing because their mind wasn't right. Caleb man was right. He, he knew the promise. The most I said that I'm going to deliver them in, Go overtake the land of Canaan. I'm going to deliver them into your hand. Caleb knew that, and he maintained that as he went out and spied out the land. But these men, they didn't maintain that thought. They, they focused on what they physically seen and the physical appearance of these men. So it says, they said, we be not able to go up against them because they're stronger than we are. Bad thought, number one. Then he says, they brought up an evil report. It says, uh... It's a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Read. Verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. So let, pay, pay very close attention to this last part of this verse. Read. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So it says we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So when they saw the land, they got fearful, they got timid, they got afraid. And in their own sight, man, compared to them, we like grasshoppers. They can step over, they can step on us and kill us. That was their thought process. Read the last part. And so we were in their sight. So notice it says, at first it says, in our own sight we were as grasshoppers. And then it says, and so we were in their sight. How was, how was they as grasshoppers? in the sight of the Amalekites when the Amalekites didn't see him. They went out and spied out the land. It says we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So their own bad thoughts caused them to get fearful and timid and forget that the Most High said that he was going to deliver us. He was gonna, that, was our, that was the promised land that he was going to deliver all of the inhabitants thereof into our hand. They forgot about that. They thought, they, they, they went and looked and based their thoughts based on what they seen, not what the Most High had already told them that he was going to give them. So we got to be very mindful of our thoughts as we are in this truth. Yeah, we in captivity. Yeah, uh, there's certain things that, certain limitations that we have in this captivity. But nevertheless, we are repenting and we keeping the commandments and certain favors that the Most High 
is going to make happen for us because we are keeping his commandments, because we are fearing, we trusting in him. So our thoughts are very important to maintain as we are in this truth. We have to make sure that we are thinking, thinking proper thoughts that line up with the Bible and the commandments. Because if, if not, we're going to be fearful, we're going to be timid, we're going to fall into the midst of sin, we're going to do things that's not pleasing before the Most High. Especially, no, no matter what age you, even if you came into the truth at 20, you still have 20 years of uh, evil thoughts that you got to get clear out of your mind, that you got to clear out of your mind from your upbringing. So let's jump over to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. So in the Old Testament we read in the, in the commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery. Meaning thou shalt not commit the act of, the, of adultery. Read. Verse 28, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So Christ gave the, a, a, a clearer picture of understanding of that adultery, that adultery starts in your mind. That adultery starts when you, when you have, when your mind is consumed with the lust of sleeping with a woman. That's where it starts. And then from that thought, you're going to go and commit the act. You're going to go and commit that fornication. You're going to go and sleep with that woman. Jump over to, go over to James. James chapter, uh, I think it's 1. 1 and 13. I think that's it. That's where lust, can, lust has conceived. Yep, that's it. James chapter 1. In verse 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So when we are tempted, when we fall away and we, we go off after our own lust, it's our own lust. It's us. It's that evil desire that's in you. It's that evil thought that's in you that you ain't dealt with, that you ain't searched the scriptures and found the scriptures to battle off that temptation when it come your way. Read. Verse 14, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And enticed and seduced and convinced of your evil desire. Read. Verse 15, then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. So that's when that thought has been allowed. That's, that's when you've been thinking. You've been thinking about that, that whatever your lust is, whether it's, it's stealing Robbing, hating your brother, you've been thinking about it for so long that bam, now it has conceived and it bring it forth sin, meaning now you done thought about it so long, it didn't sat in your mind so long, undealt with, now you done acted on it. That's what Matthew 5 and 27 is going into. He said, any man that, that think with lust in his heart after a woman, he has committed adultery already. That's that thought that ain't been dealt with. He says, then when lust, did you, did you finish reading it? Nope. Read when it is finished, bring it forth death. So that's Romans 6 and 23. The wages of sin is death. So if, when you, when you, if you have those evil thoughts that don't line up with the scriptures, you have to meditate the scriptures. You have to get in the scriptures to get rid of that. If, you got, if lust is, your, if lust is your, your, your evil desire of battle, you need to get in the scriptures. Find all the scriptures dealing with fornication. All the scriptures dealing with lust. All the scriptures, all the scriptures live with, dealing with sexual lust, you got to get in the scriptures and meditate on them. So when that thought comes, you got the scriptures to back, to back it up. And if it's too, too strong, you got your brothers to back you up. You got your sisters to back you up. You, you reach out. You get that counsel. So from there, let's go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. A lot of times it's our own thoughts that keep us, that keep us, at a low estate, a low esteem, a low mindset, a low esteem of ourselves. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Read verse 1. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So Paul says, I, I beseech you, meaning 
he he strongly encouraged you to, he said, by the mercies of God, meaning by the death of Christ on the cross, the dying for the nation of Israel, this mercy that you have, this grace that we in, this time that we have to get ourselves right. He said, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Then he says, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I mean, that's the, the, the least that you can do for, for all, that most, all that the Most High did for us by sending in Christ to die on the cross for us. For our sins, the least you could do is present your body as a living sacrifice. Deal with your sin. Deal with yourself so that you can go out and wake our people up. Deal with your disobedience so that once your disobedience is dealt with, like it tell us in uh, first, is that first Corinthians 10, yeah. that what it tell us there, once you dealt with that, then you're able to confidently go out and correct our people because you have corrected yourself first. But and it, all, it all begins in our mind. Read. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So it says, be not conformed to this world. We already know that this world, the ways of this world is what? Adultery, fornication. <clears throat> when you, um, when you, the adultery and fornication, and that's one of the, that's one of the biggest things, sexual sin. Because a lot of men, we be in the sixth grade, fifth grade, what, what our uncles and our dads ask us, hey, how many girlfriends you got? Like, what? This is an 11, 12-year-old. They shouldn't even be thinking about a girlfriend, boyfriend. They shouldn't even be thinking about a woman. They're supposed to be thinking about learning. But what is taught, what is taught and pushed in this, in this culture is sex. You, you, you look at ads, and it's worse now. It's a lot. It's getting worse and worse. Every you driving on the expressway, the ad, it's a, it's a dang on strip club or something. Everywhere you look, everywhere you go, it's adultery. You got commercials. It could be a commercial about a grocery store and a woman would be sitting there with a bikini on. You got nothing to do with groceries. But that's what's out there because they trying to keep your mind. They trying to keep your mind on the ways of this world. Hey, now, in this truth, we're supposed to learn how to love our brother, which is the children of Israel, not all nations. So, uh, since we're dealing with transform, bring up that uh, video real quick. So this is the a caterpillar changing into a butterfly. And this this is how this is how this is how the, the transformation in us as we trend being transformed by the renewal of our mind, this is a uh, um an example of how that looks. chapter 91 and verse 1. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So, us going, that, <clears throat> that butterfly going, I mean, that, that caterpillar going into cocoon, that's um, representative of us. When we come into this truth, when we first wake up, we come into this truth, come to the knowledge that we are the Israelites, that cocoon for us is the secret place of the Most High, which is this Bible, the commandments. 
we engulf us, we, we saturate ourselves in this Bible so that we could be changed, so that we could be transformed. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endure forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So starting from the bottom of this verse, it says such as leave it shall die. So before we came into this truth, we was in that dead state because we were in a state. We were under the curses because we had left God's laws. Which is why we were in the, why we why why we see the curses going on amongst Israel because that's the sign that's on the Israelites. So, but such as leave it shall die. So we already know we left the commandments. That's why we was in a dead estate. That's that decayed estate that the definition of renewed brought out. It says this now from the top. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. So. As we are being transformed by the renewal of our mind, we are coming to life. Because the, what we knew before wasn't life. We were dead men walking, just waiting on the destruction to come. But now that we are alive, through Christ, we keeping the commandments, we have to continue meditating in the scriptures, studying the scriptures. And that, and that comes from examining, not just looking in the scriptures, going and get the history so you could be deep. No, we have to make that change. We have to be examining ourselves, seeing where we fall short, where we not doing right, and compare it to the Bible. Whatever things that we are doing in, er in error, we got to look in the scriptures to correct that error, to get the scriptures, the medicine, to actually change the way we are thinking. To look at ourselves as, okay, we, the Bible say that we are, we are gods. Okay, we are the gods. I got to walk now. I got to walk like a god. A, a god walks in a way where, or God walks and keeps God's commandments. Keeps the most high God's commandments as he give, gave them to us. That's how our thought process has to change. Our thought process has to change that, you know what? I battle with sin. I battle with watching pornography. If I watch that porn, the most high might judge me right then and there as soon as I open that phone up and hit that, hit that link. We got to change the way we think. We got to change, change our mindset. If we, go, if we fall backward and go into that, that old man, that old way, our thought has to be the most high going to judge me if I do that because he very well can. Remember the scriptures say that he will show mercy unto whom he will have mercy. And all of us, he don't deal with, all of us don't have that same, um, the same level of mercy. And you don't know what level of mercy you got. You don't know if the next time messing up, the most high put you to death. So we have to take it very serious in keeping God's commandments and making sure that we correct in our ways. So go over to Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. Our thoughts can make us or break us. Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. So it says God's laws are perfect. His, his laws are flawless. You're not going to find any error in God's laws. It ain't nothing in, these, in this Bible that contradicts itself. If you're reading something and you think it's a contra contradiction, that means that you, don't, you just don't have an understanding yet. Read. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So if the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Convert is another word for transform. So if we're going to be transformed by the renewal of our mind, we have to look, in God, look into God's law so that we can be transformed or converted. Because that's the only thing that's going to convert our soul. That's the only thing that's going to correct our wickedness. If you was a thief... The only way you going the only way that you're gonna correct that behavior is by meditating in the scriptures. And after you meditate, you have to apply. You meditate. You, if you was a thief, you meditate in the scriptures. Let him who stole steal no longer, but work the work work um, work that is good that he may give to him that is able. And you meditate on that continually, continually. You don't just read it once and then you go about your way. No, you read it, 
commit it to memory and you meditate on it. Meditate on it. So because that's be that's gonna be come your thought process into what you do. So when that, that evil spirit of, of stealing come back, you able to nah, let let him who steal, let let him who stole steal no more. But rather working with his hand that which is good. Meaning that you going you you find the scriptures, of course you're gonna study of course, we're gonna we study the whole Bible. But dealing with your specific sin, you have to study the scriptures of the things that of your evil desires, the things that you battle with, the things that that easily cause you to go astray, the things that tempt you. Yeah, you can read that. It's another one, but you can read that one. That's good. Sirach chapter 18 and verse 30. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. So don't go after your lust. The thoughts that you had coming into this truth, the thoughts that you had that came from your carnal mind, don't go after those thoughts. Don't go after that mindset. It says, refrain thyself from thine appetites. The only way you're going to refrain from yourself from those appetites is if you study in the Bible, if you study in the commandments. You have to be studying the commandments. Whatever your sin, whatever your lust, your desire is, if you, if you covetous, you have to study the scriptures that deal with not being covetous. If you're an opportunist, uh, a huckster, you have to study the scriptures that pertain to that lust, to your lust, so that you can overcome it. Why? Why do you want to do that? While we in Sirach, go to uh, 33 and 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 33 and verse 17. Consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. So you want to get rid, you want to deal with your lust? And battle your lust so that you can overcome it and fight it off so that when, when the time come for somebody else to come in after you, those that seek and learning also, you're able to, to help them get through that same thing. Because there's, like the scriptures say in Corinthians, there's no, there's no um, temptation that has befallen us that's not common to man. Mm -hmm. There's many of us that deal with the same thing. So those that come in before, we're supposed to over, overcome those things by studying the scripture and applying. And then from there, when people come in afterwards, we're able to direct and guide them to take the same steps we took to overcome that sin. Um, go to Sirach 37, 37 and 27. This is the one I was looking for. Ecclesiastes chapter 37, verse 27. My son... Prove thy soul in thy life, and see what is evil for it, and give not that unto it. So that's what we got to do in this truth. It says, uh, prove your soul in your life. That's you examining yourself, examining your thoughts, examining your ways. See what's evil for it, and give not that unto it. The things that you easily are swayed by, you got to study the scriptures, get the scriptures on it. So that you're not easily swayed by it. You have to grow. And it takes time. As you've seen with that cocoon, it was a process of time with that, bu that caterpillar going, <coughs> transferring. That caterpillar transforming into a uh, butterfly, it was over a process of time. That was just a, 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 a short clip of the process. But it took time. And when that butterfly came out, it didn't just pop up out the uh, co co cocoon or the ain't nobody just come and cut that cocoon open and the butterfly came out and start flying. That butterfly had to um, work its way out. He had to fight his way out the cocoon so that why? When, it, when he came out, his, wing, his wings were actually strong to be able to fly. Otherwise, it, w it, w it wouldn't have been able to come out, meaning that we have to work out our own salvation. Ain't no, can't nobody walk can't nobody walk, can't nobody live my life for me. Can't nobody live your life for you. You have to live your own life, meaning that you have to keep God's commandments. You have to examine yourself daily so that you can see, because we all know what's wrong with us. Even in the, before coming into the truth, we knew what we was doing was evil. We knew what we was doing for evil. When we go out and teach on the streets, these brothers on the corner know, they don't, know what they're doing is evil. But coming into this truth is accepting it, acknowledging it, 
Because when, when you look at uh, First Kings, the, the steps of repentance, you got to acknowledge that you evil. You got to acknowledge that you turned away from the Most High and then start making that progress to change. Repent, turn back to God's laws because that's how you get your, your mind right. That's how you get your spirit right. That's how you grow in keeping the, of keeping other God's commandments. Go over to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. So the scriptures tell us to seek ye the Lord while he may be found. This is the message that when we go out and teach on the streets, this is the message that we relay to the, the, the brothers that's not, the brothers and sisters that have not come in yet. So how much more us that's in here, the, us that know what we are, the Israelites? We can't be playing games. We can't be playing church. It says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, meaning that you're going to keep his commandments. You seek the Lord by keeping his commandments because that's how we get understanding. That's how we get understanding of our ways. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Read. Verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. So we have to come in in this truth. We got to forsake that old man. We got to forsake them old thoughts. Because them old thoughts ain't going to get us the kingdom. Them thoughts of adultery. Them thoughts of fornication. Lasciviousness, which is evil sexual desire. The, the, the hatred. We're not going to get the kingdom having those thoughts. Strife. Envy. The gossiping spirit. We're not going to get the kingdom with that. It says, let the wicked forsake his way. Those things are wicked. Those things are not godly. Read. And let him return unto the Lord. And let him return unto the Lord, meaning that you have to start keeping God's commandments. You have to keep start keeping God's commandments. Read. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So the Most High is only going to have mercy on us. When we acknowledge our sins and apply God's commandments. If you're not doing that, even if you if you in the doors, you put the fringes on, you grew your beard out, you put the skirt on, you start wearing your head covering, but you're not dealing with those things, you might as well go back in the world. You're fooling yourself. You have to change your man. You gotta study and apply. Like the like the bishop say, study, pray, and apply. You have to study. You have to pray, and you have to apply. If you're not applying, what's the purpose? You're wasting your time because you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be ashamed. But he'll say, most, the Lord says, he's going to say, I never knew you, meaning because you wasn't keeping his commandments. So we got we to gotta make sure we change our thoughts. We have to change our ways. Um, go to... Um, Hebrews chapter 4 and 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. So it says the word of God is quick and powerful. That word quick is not, is, is, is not necessarily going into fast. Like we would like we would think today, it says that, that w the word of God is quick, quick, and powerful. I Meaning it's alive and powerful. Read and sharper than any two-edged sword. And sharper than any two-edged sword. A two-edged sword is is like a, a a weapon of war. So when when you at war and you got a two-edged sword, you cut somebody, you cutting through bone, you cutting, you, you, you cutting them, you killing them, you putting them to death. Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So when we read this Bible and you're reading your four chapters a day, however much you're reading, you're studying, when you're reading, as you're reading this Bible, you come across something, if you come across something in these, in these commandments that you are in error of, it's going to cut your heart. You're going to feel it. 
it's going you're gonna read it and be like, dang. And you're gonna you're gonna know that it's you. You know you know that it's you're gonna know that, that scripture applied to you because it's gonna cut and it's gonna cut deep. Like it says, it says piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You're gonna know for sure. Because this, the, the word of God is not just words on the page. These are the words of the Most High God to us. So when we read through something, and it's something we're battling with, something we're dealing with, it's going to cut to the heart. We're going to feel it. And what it's, supposed to do, what it's supposed to produce is repentance. You're supposed to feel remorseful and repent. And then search the, study the scriptures, find more scriptures, that deal with that so that you can study, 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 and now you can apply it because you've been, a stu- you've been studying it. So when that temptation comes your way, you're able to overcome it. And it says, it says, of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and, the, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's why it cut when you read it. When you're reading the Bible, when you're reading something, it may be something that you, you may not have re- yet recognized yet about yourself. And you're reading the scriptures, and it cut to the core. And you'd be like, dang, that's me. You know exactly you know exactly at that moment in time what you need to do to change, what you need to do to get right. So from that, now it's time to, okay, don't just leave it at that and be like, oh, I got to change. Now you're going to your own thoughts and your own mind how to change it. No, now it's time to go find the scriptures so that you could be successful and change it. Because other than that, you're not going to be successful. You try to do it in your own power, your own might, your own mind. You ain't gonna get you ain't gonna, you don't get too far because you're trying to do it in your own might. You have to use God's commandments, like it tell us in um, Ephesians: be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, not our might, His might. Because it's it's in the commandments that we are gonna. It's through the commandments that we get our minds right. That's the only way we are gonna get our minds right. Through the commandments. You want to add anything? Hey, officer, get the book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 15. Sirach 2 and 15. This is, it's, it's a heavy topic that the officer going over. And the first thing that, that pop in my mind when I think about the scriptures that's being read is that we have to maintain a healthy fear of God. What do I mean by healthy fear? Meaning... The next time that I sin or the next time I do this particular thing that I'm battling, that might be my last time. My time might be up. The Lord might be done dealing with me on this very next time. Read that, officer. This is Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not, o- will not disobey his word. So when you have that healthy fear for God, you're not going to disobey his word. Because that, that fear will lead you to second guess what you already know is wrong. It'll stop you from doing it. It'll give you apprehension when it's time for you to sin. Because you understand that you don't know how much mercy the Lord is going to extend to you. Read it again. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Read. And they that love him will keep his way. So when you... You either fear God and love him and are able to keep his ways, or when you're out there and you sin it, you have this thing where the, you feel like the judgment of God will not come upon you. Let's, let's read that real quick. Last scripture, uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and 11. That's why it's good when brothers and sisters are reading their four chapters a day. As you read, you read the judgments of God. God said, I am the Lord, I change not. Meaning that the same God that destroyed the whole earth with the um, exception of eight people is the same God that reigns today. There has to be a level of fear with him. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Because sometimes we'll do things and we'll do them and we'll do them and we'll think that because I got away with it last time, I'm going to get away with it this time as well. Because the Lord does not judge us immediately. The scriptures say um, that he wished that Israel not perish. Read. Therefore, 
The heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So the minds of men now, because God is not instantly judging them, are now set to do evil things. That's why when you're coming in this truth, like the officer read in Romans 12, we have to renew the way that we are thinking. We cannot know, we can no longer live in a mindset where because I've done this so many times and the Lord has not judged me yet, I will not be judged. All right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth